For thousands of years she have been lost to the world, her name means nothing to us. Her memory is dust. Only the names of her father and brother are remembered, their tale celebrated in the holy text, while hers a footnote. Sad, violent, and forgotten. This is the story of Dinah, the only daughter of the patriarch Jacob, recounts an episode in which she goes out to see the daughters of the land, but is violated, seduced, and or abducted by Shechem, a Hivite prince, who subsequently falls in love with and wishes to marry her. While her father is silent, Dinah's brothers negotiate marriage terms in guile. After all the male residents of the town circumcise themselves, a precondition for intermarrying with Jacob's family. Dinah is the only daughter of the patriarch Jacob, at least the only one named, others are mentioned in Genesis, perhaps including granddaughters. Her mother Leah bore her after six sons and named her Dinah, meaning her judgment. The story of Dinah recounts an episode in which the girl goes out to see the daughters of the land, but is assaulted, violated, seduced, and or abducted by Shechem, a Hivite prince, who subsequently falls in love with her. Shechem asks his father, Hammer, to negotiate marriage terms. Jacob is silent on the matter, but Dinah's brothers are distressed by the outrage, for such a thing is not done to a daughter of Jacob. They demand that Shechem and all the males of the town circumcise themselves before intermarrying with Jacob's family, a proposition made in guile. The residents of Shechem agree, presuming they will collectively gain both wealth and women by the deal. But on the third day, when all the male residents are in dire pain from the circumcision, Simeon and Levi, full brothers of Dinah, enter the town, slaughter all the men, and rescue Dinah from Shechem's house. The other brothers then pillage the town in revenge for the defilement of their sister. Jacob is displeased, for now he has become odious to the natives of the land, but the brothers are given the last word, should our sister be treated like a whore? After she returns to her father's household, she is never heard of again in the biblical narrative, though she is mentioned along with the 66 descendants of Jacob who go down from Canaan to Egypt. In the biblical world of the ancient Near East, when a virgin had intimate relations out of wedlock, whether seduced or violated, she was devalued in terms of her social status, bringing shame upon the family. Her virginity was crucial in negotiations over bride price and the familial alliances forged through marriage. In the legal discourse around sexual intercourse with a virgin outside of wedlock, whether she was betrothed to another man or not, the woman was presumed to have consented if she did not cry out in protest in the city or town, and to have been violated if she was taken in the open country where her cries could not have been heard, Deuteronomy. The woman's will or testimony was simply not taken into account. Given that Dinah was taken in the open country, her father and brothers presumed she had been violated, as the parallel terms suggest, she was defiled, Genesis, treated like a whore, it was deemed an outrage, see Deuteronomy, Judges and Samuel. Whereas the seducer or violator would normally be forced to pay the virgin bride price for the daughter and marry her, Deuteronomy, Exodus, Dinah's brothers negotiate terms with Shechem and his father disingenuously, with no intention of sanctioning the marriage. The story then may be read as a polemic against intermarriage, where the abduction of Dinah becomes the pretext for the severance of ties with Shechem and the Hivites, one of the Canaanite tribes. The narrative, however, is rife with gaps and ambiguities, in which Dinah's silence and the divide between father and brothers loom large. Shechem seems genuinely emotionally attached to Dinah. This makes the brothers' deceit and wholesale slaughter all the more heinous. Further, Jacob keeps silent and remains passive throughout the negotiations, the reader does not know whether he approves of the marriage proposal. After the rampant bloodshed and sack of Shechem, the patriarch denounces his sons, Simeon and Levi, for stirring up trouble for him and making him odious among the natives of the land, the Canaanites and Perizzites. He will now live in fear of retaliation and, despite having bought land near Shechem with the intention of settling down, he must move on. 
Later, he curses Simeon and Levi as instruments of violence, neither tribe inherits territory with definitive borders in the land. The sympathetic depiction of Shechem and Jacob's opacity suggests the outcome might have been different had the brothers not taken matters into their own hands, avenging their sister's abduction with mass slaughter. The story has been called the Rape of Dinah, although not all scholars agree that she was raped, forced into sexual relations against her will. Unlike in the account of the rape of Tamar by her half-brother, Amnon, we do not hear Dinah speak or cry out in resistance before Shechem takes her. Further, while Amnon violently overpowered Tamar despite her pleas of protest, it is not clear that Shechem forced himself upon Dinah. This story is topical to the horrific stories of the Old Testament. It is not the only mention of rape within its pages. What is telling and sorrowful is that although it was Dinah that was raped, there is no mention of her intent and wishes concerning the fate of all involved. Beyond the horrors of rape, the story tells freely of the massacre of a whole city, including those who were hardly involved in the tragedy. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. If you like my videos, please like and share. Thank you for watching.